Hi, I'm Richard Byrne. In this video, I'm going to show you five Google Forms features that every teacher should know how to use. So let's go ahead and jump right into my sample form number 123. And you can see here, I already have a question for my students, and it is, who is your homeroom teacher? And this leads me into the first feature that I want to show you, and that's a feature called Go to Section Based on Answer. Now, I have written out this question of who is your homeroom teacher? And before I add another question, what I'm going to do is add a section for Mr. Burns students, Mrs. Smith students, and Mr. Bob's students. So I'm going to do that in the bottom right corner. I'll select Add Section, and we'll set this up to be Mr. Burns students. And then I'm going to add another section. And that section is going to be called Mrs. Smith's students. And one more section, and we'll call it Mr. Bob's students. Now, this question I want to bring back up to the top. And I'm going to make this first question required. And now I'm going to enable go to section based on answer. And in this case, we'll say go to section based on answer for Mr. Burns class. Well, we'll go to the section called Mr. Burns students. Mrs. Smith, so that'll line up to Mrs. Smith. And Mr. Bob, they'll line up to Mr. Bob. Now, I can add questions to each one of these sections, and I'll do that right now. Let's add a fun little question here. Let's add in a little multiple choice question and say, what is the tallest mountain in the world? And I'll give a couple of options. And there we are. Now, what's really important here is that rather than selecting go to section, go to next section, we're going to say submit the form. Otherwise, when Mr. Burns students are done, they'll have to go on and take the questions from Mrs. Smith and Mr. Bob students that appear after that. So that's go to section based on answer. Now let's open up a new form and let me show you some other features that you can use. Let's make a blank form again. And in this next section, let's set up some preferences for our quizzes that we might give in a Google form. So we'll just call this one sample quiz number 125. And let's set our preferences so that we don't forget to give point values or to make a question required. So this upper right corner will select preferences and we'll select make questions required so that our kids can't skip a question. And we'll set a default point value. We can do 5, 10, or even 0 if you want, or anything in between. And now, when we write our questions, they're going to have a default point value. Maybe my question will be something along the lines of, who was the first president of the United States? Sorry, Washington, Jefferson, or Adams. Now, we haven't made this into a quiz yet. In the upper right corner, let's make sure it's quizzes. Make this a quiz. And save those answers. So now we have our default value of 10 points up there in the upper right-hand corner because we have one question, and it's worth 10 points. And by default, it's a required question for all of my students. That's a handy little way to... Make sure you never forget to give a point value for a quiz. Now, at the end of the quiz, a little 
trick or a little tip that I've used for years is here in this presentation field. When students are done with the quiz, I'm going to turn off this show link to submit another response. I'm going to put in a little note for my students, and I've always done this. And it's just something simple like, if you have finished early, take out your silent reading book or work on an assignment quietly until your classmates are done. Now, obviously I can put in any little reminder I want in there, but it's much better than the default of simply, thank you for taking the quiz. So next up, when we're making a quiz, oftentimes we've written a similar question in the past, or maybe we've written the exact same question in the past that we want to use in this new quiz that we're making. And so we'll take a look at an easy way to do that, and that's to import questions from your previous quiz. You can do this at any point when you're creating a form, it doesn't have to be a quiz, it can be any form. Select Import Questions. This will bring up all the Google Forms that are in your Google account. Scroll down and I'll find one here. So I highlight that one, hit Select. That will bring up the questions that are in that form. And I can select one or all of the questions, or if the quiz has more than two questions, and hopefully yours does, you can import three or four out of ten, or whatever amount you want. Let's import those questions. And there it is. Okay. Now, you'll notice that that one was only worth five points because... On the previous quiz, it was only worth five points. So if I want to be consistent, I'll need to go in and edit the answer key and give that 10 points. So now I've updated that and we'll see our total points is now 20 and both questions are worth 10 points. And the last little thing you should know how to do in Google Forms is installing an add-on. Now you can find add-ons either by clicking on this little add-on jigsaw puzzle piece or in the upper right corner next to your profile icon. You can go down and select add-ons there. And that will open up your add-ons menu and you can search for one that you want to use. In this case, the one that I want to use is called Certifyum, and Certifyum will let you create a certificate that is automatically emailed to your students or placed in their Google Drive when they successfully pass one of your quizzes. And if you want to know how to use Certifyum, I have a video about that linked up in the description of this video right here. So those are five Google Forms features that every teacher who uses Google Forms should know how to use. As always, for more tips and tricks like this, please check out practicaledtech.com or subscribe to my YouTube channel.